Quilts and I'm back with another video. I am making cell phone or technology devices holders so they would actually hold your device up while you're doing other things. On this one I even have my little holder on here and it still sits into the device. These can hold your iPads, cell phones, any of your tablets or e-readers. So, the supplies you're going to need to actually make this device, we'll just start with the notions first. You're going to need some kind of a chalk marker or some kind of marker that will come out of your material because you're going to be marking on the right side of your fabric. So, I'm just using this little chalk marker that has a little wheel inside and so it marks as it turns. That's what I'm using. A corner pointer I don't know the exact name of this but you actually stick this in the corners to make your corners come out it's optional for you to have tweezers I just use my fingers to pull mine through I will suggest using the longest tweezers that you have you're gonna need a ruler for marking with your chalk you're gonna need some kind of a funnel you can also just cut off the corner on a plastic bag and you can use that as well as a funnel I'm going to be using a measuring cup just to get my rice out of the bag and thinking of rice we're going to be filling this with rice I would prefer to use walnut shavings but I can't find my container so I am using rice instead today you're also going to need some fiber fill so buy you a bag of this i actually use the premium fiber fill that's used when you're making dowels but any fiber fill will work you're going to need pelon peltex need something that's stiff so temtex would work anything that's a stiff interfacing would be fine and then we are going to need our fabrics so i am going to pull these items out and we're going to start at the top for this process I decided to do some pre-sewing I have all of my steps kind of prepared ahead of time because I didn't want to do a whole lot of cutting because a lot of these are just little quick sewing and pressing steps and so I didn't want to have a video that had a lot of cuts so what I've done is I've cut rect fabric rectangles three different sizes I was just experimenting with the sizes I don't know what they're going to look like other than the two that I have made those are the only two I know the size of for this small one I cut a rectangle that was six by nine for the medium I cut a rectangle that was seven and a half by ten and then for this large one I cut a rectangle that was nine by twelve so I feel maybe you can do these with any size rectangles. I'm interested in seeing what size this small one actually turns out in the end. So once you get your rectangles, you just want to fold them in half on the long side. So your long edge, you want to fold in half on any size that you make. So if you're only making one, then you're just doing the one. But I have multiples because I have them in steps of how I'm going to be presenting this video to you. So the first step is you want to sew your rectangle. This is the fold right here. And so I started stitching. I backstitched here, sewed up about an inch and a half, and then I backstitched. I left space of about an inch and a half. I backstitched here and then stitched around and down with a quarter inch seam. And I know you can't see that very well in the camera because I used white thread. I just used my regular piecing thread. I decided not to change this out. So that is step number one. Once you do that, you're now going to 
go to your ironing surface and since I have a fold right here I just go ahead and stick a pin here this is where you may want to use a glass head pin if you have it because that's going to be on the bottom just so you don't lose track of your fold and then you want to put your seam that you stitched on the long side centered with that pin and then once you do that you just want to press this seam open so I'm gonna try to do this with my hand and now that I have my pin marked I'm just going to take it out and hold it in place because I want to rotate this to show you what's happening on the other side so you want to push this in and then your seams should line up and they don't have to be exact here basically all we want to do at this point is just press this seam open and I don't know if this even makes a difference you may can skip this step or press your seam just at the bottom open because this is going to be inside of a case so it's not going to make that much difference so basically you do that with the iron at the same time I just go ahead and press down my sides so that they're nice and flat so when I do that you'll have something that looks like this where you've got your ends this part is tucked in and then my ends are flat and I do that so that I can now sew another seam I want to sew a quarter inch seam I want to back stitch on the end come up about a half inch to an inch and stop and then leave an inch and a half and then continue on my suggestion would be to make sure that you're not leaving the opening where your seam is you want to make sure you're stitching over that and so when you do that you'll have something that looks like this where I have stitch from here to here and I back stitch and then also back stitch here and stitched off and back stitched at this point you're now ready to turn your unit with the right sides out so I just go into the back and I just go to the farthest corner and I just try to push that corner out and then I go back in to the next furthest corner and push that by that corner out Now at this point, I'm going to now use my pointer tool and I'm going to go inside and make sure all of my corner points are out. So when I do that, this is my back and you have a seam that's underneath and you just want to now press this so that you press those little seams in and then I want to press up on this unit. Just press back. When you've done that, you'll have a unit that looks something like this. So all it is is just pressed here. I didn't worry about what was going on here because it's not going to stay pressed anyway. I just wanted to make sure this was nice and flat prior to me doing some stitching. The next step is you're going to mark up three inches from the edge here. And so I just laid a ruler on here, put my three inch on the edge and then I just used my chalk and I just ran the chalk up against the edge of the ruler then I came down two inches from the edge and ran another chalk line next step is to insert this piece of Peltex into the bottom 
I want to actually place that pale tax and I'm sure you're not probably seeing these lines very well because I used white but I'm hoping you can see that I want to put this strip of pale tax right in the middle for this large size I cut my pale tax five and one half by one and a quarter and this is one inch so I want to actually center it so that when I'm stitching I'm going to catch it in my stitching So a piece that's five and a half. So I get it into this little area and then I'm going to hold it with my hand just so I can maneuver the other end into the corner. I lay it down and then I just check it to see exactly where is it by running my fingers across it. And then I go ahead and use a couple of flower head pins because they're flat. To just hold that in place and you probably only need one but I use two next step is going to be at the sewing machine we're now going to stitch around to hold this Peltex in place when you've done that you've got something that looks like this I just used my open toe foot this time to make sure I could see where the chalk lines were and on the sides I just eyeball going around this corner stitch down eyeball and then just come down it's a tablet device it's not a quilt so it will be okay if you're not perfect here and then once you've done that you've got your unit ready for stuffing so I like to start stuffing the small end first here and so I want to get stuffing all the way over into the corners. And so that's again where I will be using this tool. Now we're going to stuff it with our fiber fill. And I do like to fluff it. I don't know why. I just used to do it when I made dowel. Dial. So I still do it in anything else that I do. I feel like it needs to be fluffed from being compressed. Even though I want to stuff it right back in and make it pretty sturdy oops I <laughs> hit the camera there so now I've got quite a bit in but it's not over here in the corner so that's where I just take this tool push it down push it into the corners and then I continue stuffing Again, it's subjective as to how much stuffing you want because when you put your device in it will tilt up a little bit more so let me show you my other two I do have a lot of stuffing in mine but um, I wanted to make sure that they're nested in there and that they're secured this one's a little looser than this one this one is really stuffed and I like them really stuffed for more stability you could go ahead and so your opening closed but i'm going to wait until i get all of my holders completed and then do all the hand sewing at one time so next we want to turn around and we want to go to the second hole that we have here and we're actually going to put rice in at this point and i'm going to use my funnel so i'm just going to stick it in my hole here and then I'm just going to get a cup of rice. It'll take about two and a half to three cups of rice, depending on your size. It could take less if you do the smaller size, but this large one takes about two and a half to three cups of rice. And like I said, you can also do this with a bag that has where well, you cut the corner out and then you can do that as well. So 
So that's two cups of rice. It's still pretty loose here when I'm grabbing it. I got a lot of fabric. So I'm going to try maybe another half of a cup. See what I end up with. So you could put a little bit more rice, but I think I'm okay. I have about this much space left. And now at this point, I'm going to put more fiber fill on the inside. So I'm going to actually stuff it. And what I like to do is I like to push down so that I know that my rice is not going to come up over the fiber field easily. So I actually push down until it stops. So then, as I said, the last step would be to just hand sew your openings closed. And so I am going to continue to work. So I have three of them here. And I want you to note that on this one, I went up three inches and made my first mark and then two inches. And notice the difference on this one where I only went up two and a half inches and then one and a half inches. And I think I like this marking better so that was another thing I wanted to do I'm testing where I want to do my marks so yes so I will continue to sew these and then I'll come back with some finished device holders I'm back and I have completed seven of my stands and I just thought that I would go ahead and finish off this video but I wanted to show you the differences in the sizes here and you can actually use your cell phone on the smaller sizes and you can also insert them both ways this is how it would look in the medium sized one and then turned sideways and then the cell phone in the large one and then turned sideways so i really like these because you can prop your phone up and you don't have to have a very expensive stand I do have the iPad Pro sitting on two of these but it actually will sit on just one as well but I just did that for the setup but it will sit there on just one and over here is the iPad 2 um, I will say that I made these fabrics or cotton but they are a little bit thicker they're not quite denim I don't know what the texture is more like a poplin maybe and then this one here is actually quilters cotton and I do like making them out of the thicker material uh, for some reason it's no big deal as far as the output results but I just like the hand sewing the handling of the fabrics a little bit thicker with this I'll leave a link in the description box for the supplies and the measurements for this small, medium, and the large size here in case you want to make these particular sizes. I do like all of them. And I think that's it for this video. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And click that notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload videos and also when I go live. Share my videos with your other quilting friends. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.